Thank you for joining us for today's episode of What Sam Said. We ask that you visit www.samuelwaynewest.com so that you can view previously aired videos that are part of our video ministry. Last week, we introduced the series, As He Is, So Are We, and we will continue with part one of that series today. The book of Genesis says that God is a speaker. He spoke things into existence. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 says that God breathed into man the breath of life, and man became a speaking spirit. As he is, so are we. In John 10 and 30, Jesus said, I and my Father are one. The centurion soldier said to Jesus, just speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Jesus is a speaker. Throughout the New Testament, he spoke words that set captives free, that healed the sick, that opened blinded eyes and performed miracles. 2 Corinthians 4 and 13 says, we have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. The message versions of 2 Corinthians 4 and 13 says this, We're not keeping this quiet, not in your life. Just like the psalmist who wrote, I believed it, and so I said it, we say what we believe as Christians. You can have what you say, so watch what you say. I read a comment on someone's blog that said, I will make it a habit to consciously speak life. I will watch my words at all times and I will believe that God, what he has for me, will be for me. I will be intentional in every area of my life as it relates to the words that I say. What I speak over me, what I speak over my family, over my children, and more importantly, what I allow others to speak into me. In one of his messages, Brother Kenneth Hagin said, What you are and what you have in your life is a direct result of the words that you've spoken over your life. So if you want better, then we must say better. In the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 22, 23, and 4, it reads, And Jesus answering unto them saith, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Verse 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now in verse 23, the Lord says, Say or saith four times. Our words have power. You can have what you say. Our words are seeds. When you speak, you are planting seeds into your heart are the heart of the individuals that you are speaking to. So as we sow our words into the heart of our children or into our spouse or other relationships, while we're being big baller, shot caller, and saying those things that we mean at the time, we need to be ready to eat what our harvest will produce. When the words we speak line up with God's words, his power is released. When we continue to speak those negative words, words of doubt and unbelief, we're given life or we're given life or or permission to those negative situations in our lives to continue. I've heard people say, well, I don't know why this continues to happen to me. Because you've spoken it. You believed it when you said it and you keep confessing it. Proverbs 18 and 21 tells us that death and life are in the power of the tongue. The easy to read version says it this way. The tongue can speak words that bring life or death. Those who love to talk must be ready to accept what it brings. Now, the Montezuma Folk Valley Hood version says it this way. Your mouth going to write a check that you're behind ain't going to be able to cash. Just keep talking. Just Myers has a book, Change Your Words, Change Your Life, Understanding the Power of Every Word That We Speak. If you want better, speak better. God cannot bless what you don't say. We are speaking spirits as he is, so are we. The Bible tells us, for by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Just because it did not happen today doesn't mean that God is not going to bless it. Ecclesiastes tells us to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. It took some time, if we were to be honest with ourselves, for us to talk ourselves into some of the situations that we're in, And truth be told, it may take some time for us to talk ourselves out of it. But delay does not mean that God is not working it out for our good. 
we, we can't go by what we see. Just because we don't see any movement or change doesn't mean that we're not winning. Pastor Alan McNair said, faith gives no evidence that the reality is coming until the reality of it has appeared. Again, faith gives no evidence that the reality of what we're believing God for is coming until the reality of it has manifested. He says, so don't look for any evidence. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18 says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen, they are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Don't give up. Don't allow a struggle to discourage you. Ephesians 6 and 13 in the Amplified says this, Therefore put on the complete armor of God, so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger, and have done everything that the crisis demands. Stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, and victorious. Don't allow what appears to be that you have not gained any ground or set you. The verse says, stand, having done all that the crisis demands, stand firm in your place. It says fully prepared and immovable. What am I saying? Stand, hold your ground. By doing so, we have already won. You may say that I'm no further today in terms of where I was on yesterday, but I say, yes, yesterday was a day of victory. Stand your ground. It may not always be that we will have to take a step forward every day, but we should not discount the fact that we did not take a step backward. Stand your ground. Pastor Theo McNair Jr. shared with us that sometimes the routine of what we do has to become our reward. We're not to discount the monotonous. He went on to say, That with the monotonous, being consistent in our stance, holding firm our position of faith, holding firm our belief in what the promise of God has said, with that monotonous, that consistency of habit and routine, that we will see the miraculous. So you did not get the job. Don't give in. Don't give up. It is not over. Continue to stand. We got to remember that the devil tries our faith because he knows the value of it and we don't. In one of his services, Pastor Todd said, God, you, you factored in our fumble. So, so what am I saying? All significant change is gradual. Stand your ground. Okay, I don't see any movement today, but you didn't lose any. Stand your ground. God, you knew that today was going to be a challenge for me, but you kept me anyway. God, you knew I was going to miss the mark today. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Stand your ground. Delay is not denial. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 5 and 20 to give thanks at all times for all things in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In all things give thanks. So you're standing to hold your ground and thank him while you're standing there. Sometimes we need to be thankful that we have a job instead of complaining about the one we have. Just keep talking. You're going to find yourself looking for one again. Sometimes we need to be thankful for the hoop that we are driving instead of confessing all the time what's wrong with it. Keep talking. You're going to find yourself back in the weekly or monthly bus pass lane. Sometimes we need to be thankful for the spouse that we have and start working on our own issues instead of running off at the mouth, being disrespectful. Keep talking. You're going to find yourself having to register on a when keep my mouth closed dot he she come and they left me. Learn the art of silence. Not every comment deserves a response. People are talking about they need to be around like-minded people to help them with their vision, to help them frame their words. I need like-minded people to be on my team. If I can just get someone to see what I see, someone who has the capacity to operationalize my vision, oh my God, I will be unstoppable. So why are you looking for like-minded people I really think you need to be looking for like-spirited people, folks who can speak life into you, folks who can hear from the Spirit of God, folks who can agree for you. We're reaching for folks who are the reason we're in the mess that we're in. We're reaching for folks who can't satisfy what we need in order to be able to elevate our lives and our ministries. Folks reaching for people who are connected to a false image of them 
they can't speak into you because, boo, they're the ones that have caused the demons to come to your house, not because of the words that they're speaking. Stop telling everybody on social media to pray for you. Some of them may be the ones praying against you and you are giving them the ammunition that they need. Close your mouth. If you're going to ask for someone to pray, to agree with you, then be intentional about who you ask and then get those to stand in agreement with you. Some people have been assigned to your circle so they can keep you in bondage. It gives a, a whole new meaning to sleeping with the enemy. Some of us have the enemy so close to us in terms of the relationships with people that we have that all he has to do is to listen what we say in our sleep sometimes in order to know what fiery darts to throw against us. One of my favorite poems, poems by Miss Anna McNair that she used to share all the time is, I am a soldier. I have adapted it some for this message, but the words still ring true today. I am a soldier. I am a soldier, a student in this army of greatness. I have been taught, trained by experience, tried by adversity, and tested by fire. I am a volunteer in this army, and I am enlisted until I see a manifestation of the seed of God that has been sown in my life. I will not get out. I will not sell out. I will not be talked out or pushed out. I am faithful, reliable, capable, and dependable. If others need me and my witness, I am there. I will stand my ground. I am not a baby. I don't need to be pampered or petted, primed up, pumped up, picked up, or pepped up. I am a soldier. I will stand my ground. No one has to call me, remind me, write me, visit me, entice me, Allure me. I am a soldier. I have the promise of God on this and I will stand my ground. I am not a wimp. I am in place when and where I need to be. No one has to send me flowers, gifts, food, candy, or give me handouts. I don't need to be cuddled and cradled and cared for or catered to. I am committed. I cannot have my feelings hurt bad enough to turn me around. I cannot be discouraged enough to turn me aside. I cannot lose enough to cause me to quit. I am a soldier. I will stand my ground. When I accepted the call into this service, I had nothing. If I end up with nothing, I will still come out ahead. I will win. I will stand my ground. My God has and will always continue to supply all of my need. I am more than a conqueror. I will always triumph in Christ Jesus. The devil cannot defeat me. People cannot disillusion me. Weather cannot weary me. I am a soldier. I will stand my ground. Sickness cannot stop me. Battles cannot beat me. Money cannot buy me. Governments cannot silence me. And hell cannot handle me for I am a soldier. I will stand my ground. I will not give up. I will not turn around. I am a soldier. I will stand my ground. In the book of Romans chapter 8, 10, I'm sorry, verses 8, 9, and 10, it says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the Bible goes on to say, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget, stand your ground. It only takes a point to win. Stand your ground. Having done all to stand, having done all that the crisis demands, stand there for until you get what you're standing there for. Thank you for joining us today. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and share our messages with family and friends. As we close, I will leave you with Jude verses 24 and 25. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To our only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. Thank you for joining us for what Sam said, and you are more than a conqueror through him that loved you. Thank you again. <laughs>